back. Oh, yeah. Well, when I was up here last time, you had tourists in here. Yeah. Um, and, of course, when you were down in Marlton, you had a sandwich shop, too. Yeah. Since then, the diner's gone. You know, I wonder where that Chamber of Commerce was when we lost the diner. I don't know, Norman. I don't know where they are at all. I mean, it's... I don't either. Crazy. We've lost the diner. We've lost the music store. We lost the health place. And you don't ever hear them say anything. Mm -mm. No. Well, it bothers me that we have a Chamber of Commerce that would do that. Or I should say don't support their local merchants. Yeah. They want you to shop local, don't they? Yeah. Oh, be sure to shop local. Well, you're local. Yeah. Oh, it's disgusting. I'm local, but most of my business is tourists. Yeah, which is exactly what they should be wanting. Yeah. To happen is a place to go. Yeah. Well, I'm going to take around a little, get a little bit close up on your uh, some of your goods here. Well, Norman, I'd like to say, I mean, you've supported me since I've been in business, and I thoroughly appreciate well, that. You're welcome. You have, I. You have been a big supporter of mine, and and uh, through this battle and stuff, and, and I just appreciate it. Yeah. I want you to know that. Thank you. Well, we're doing a little history of, of Grandpa's Pantry this way, and I just wanted to I see you every once in a while down at the coffee shop. In fact, that's the last place I saw you yeah. was at the coffee shop. Peanut butter fudge. Gluten-free cornmeal. What I always liked about this was these quantities were the kind that you didn't have to have a huge family to buy, for, buy them. Yeah, we try to no? make them small enough, you know, and then if people need more, they can always buy a couple of bags. So. And, you know, we found out when we went to Kentucky that the nature of this store is pretty much, and I think those were, it was probably like an Amish store. Yeah. I was surprised you were able to uh, stock these meats and cheeses and so forth. Well, they're not delivered here. We have to go and pick right. up part way for them. But, you know, I mean, it's been worth it to us because the quality's just unmatched. So. Yeah. Well, this is a sad Valentine's present from the state of West Virginia. No, I really thought that Denise Campbell would do something and I would make comments when she was in the parade. Yeah, I did too, and I, I'm, I'm disappointed. I really, uh, I've talked to Denise twice since Tuesday, and she is concerned. She didn't think this was going to happen, but the bottom line is she was not the one that acted, and I was under the impression she was going to. She was leaving it up to somebody Well, I else. thought she was going to have some uh, legislation. Yeah, and, and she didn't do that, so it didn't get done. So... I guess it didn't I, matter I, to I her. I lost my faith in the legislature. I don't think we have anybody in there that cares about people. No, no, no. I don't think they do. I, I'm just very disappointed in Denise. I really thought we had somebody would do something. But apparently she doesn't care either. It's sort of like a disease or something they get, you know, like the catching the flu. Uh, they get in office and after that they're not worth squatting. Well, I will be sure to remind her the next time I see her in a parade wanting some business. Of course, I never expected Helmick to help. He's not into that type of thing, helping local people. Well, I talked to Denise uh, yesterday or day before, and I told her, I said, no, I'm closing on Monday. Of course, I'm not open tomorrow either, so this is actually my last day. Yeah. And uh, she said, well, we're not giving up, so she was still going to try and do something, but, you know, it's too late for me at this point. Yeah, you need to be restocking and things like that. Repeal and amend Title 23 of the U.S. Code and West Virginia Code 17. See, what they're doing... I don't think Title 23 United States Code is constitutional. No. So they basically used eminent domain yep. for the purpose of outdoor advertising for 660 feet from the road. It's denying people their property rights. It's not infrastructure. This speech, free and, speech. And I don't think it's constitutional. Now just look at this. This just, just 
My goodness, there must be 200 pages of this stuff here. But the federal legislature say it's a state issue, and the state legislature say it's a federal issue. So oh, I know what they did. I know the, how they did it. They, uh, they gave them federal money. And then he said, you will do this or you'll lose your federal money. And then the legislature comes along and says, well, it's in the best interest of the people of the state of West Virginia to, uh, uh, to get the federal money. Yeah, but they won't lose the federal money if they amend the regulations. They've already amended them twice. Right, all they have to do times. is... Three times. Yep. So and they'll, they'll amend it for somebody else after yeah, you guys are going. It wouldn't affect their funding at all. And it would allow businesses to exist and help communities. And they claim they don't have money to remove snowshoes sign, but they get $46 million. But they don't have a couple of hundred dollars that they can take snowshoes and I can form a sign down right now. Yeah, this, this is just uh, bothered me about snowshoe. That okay. snowshoe would get by with that, with their signs. And the bank. Yeah. The, the, the bank signs. They're illegal. Okay. Yeah. Yep, sure but are. some people get by and some don't. Yeah. Yeah.